Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cooking with So Crazy. Uh, tonight, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be making a naan bread to pair very nicely with the awesome, delicious uh, uh, curry that bread made yesterday. Um, so we're going to get, get straight into it. The nice thing about the naan is you can make this really quickly. You can have the naan done from ingredients like this to a cooked naan within about a half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, and then what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you what ingredients you're going to be needing um, and then we're going to go through the recipe itself and get going. Alright, so first thing we're going to go through the ingredients. Obviously have a, get, have a look at uh, the website, the recipes are there. This one is sitting over there and ready to go so you can always have a look. And please help yourself, download it, try it out, and give us a comment, a shout, us out, shout out at us on our website uh, and on the Facebook page and tell us how your non came out. Post any pictures you, you would like because we'd love to get your feedback and what you have created from us. Okay, so first thing what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what ingredients we have. We obviously got some flour. This is just a bread flour. You can use any type of flour. The great thing about a naan is that you can use any type of flour you'd like to. Um, we are going to be using a bread flour, um, but yes. Uh, the next one is your baking powder. So this is obviously baking powder. You need one teaspoon of baking powder, three cups of flour. Uh, then you need a half a teaspoon of baking soda, which is this over here. Then you need two teaspoons of sugar over here. Then you need some salt. Now salt, the recipe itself doesn't actually give it a quantity. It's all decided on to you. I've used one t a teaspoon of salt. Uh, I think that gives a nice flavor all around. Uh, the next one is an egg, which will need to be beaten later. The next one is yogurt, four tablespoons of yogurt. Now this right here is the important part. If you do not have a yogurt, your naan bread's not gonna be as creamy, as soft as you'd really want it to be. The proteins that are within it and the actual dairy itself soften up the, the bread and therefore give you a nice, soft, fluffy end product. The next little bit is a two tablespoons of butter. Uh, this is for the recipe itself. We will need some more later for the finished product, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, the next little bit is a cup of warm water. Obviously, this cup's empty right now. You want this to be warm when you actually start it because it needs to help not only melt the butter down, but warm up the whole dough as a whole. Uh, the last little bit, uh, it says poppy seeds, but you can put anything you want on there from poppy seeds to herbs to garlic to cheese to, uh, um, to sesame seeds, anything like that. Hence why I've got a lot of other things around here. For example, I've got some oregano, I've got some garlic, and I've got some cheese. And also, I've got some extra butter here for the butter later. Um, in terms of the equipment that you will need, you can make this by hand very easily. It's basically you put everything kind of together, you mix it all together and into a dough and then it's done. I'm again going to be using the mixer because I find it's a lot easier, it's a lot quicker to do it that way. Uh, but in terms of what you would need to actually make it in actual equipment would be definitely a whisk with that little trick I showed you. You got to give the, the flour and everything a nice whisk initially just to combine it together. Um, and then you'll need obviously a rolling pin later. Once we've made our, our balls, we'll actually roll it out and turn it on. And then you can decide to make the naan in two different ways. One way is you use a wok, specifically the back of the wok, or the other way you put it into the oven, which you just kind of cook it off there. I don't recommend that way. If you can do a wok, rather use the wok. You can also do this on a fire, on an open flame, but you have to be very quick with it because of the way it's supposed to be cooked. All right, um, again, Kenwood mixer, and that's pretty much the equipment that will be needed. All right. So the first thing, if we're going to jump straight into it, is we're going to be putting our flour and our baking powder and bicarb soda. So here's three cups of flour, we'll put it into our mixer. If you are doing this by hand, you do the exact same thing until I tell you to do something different. Uh, then we're going to take our baking powder, we pour that straight in. In terms of having to sieve it, you do not need to sieve it if you don't want to. It doesn't make a big difference, however some people prefer to serve it, it gives a much lighter texture. Uh, but that all depends on how you use the whisk initially. The next little bit is you're going to put your baking soda, half a teaspoon, into there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your whisk and you're going to give that a nice little mix just like we've done before. Mix it all nicely through together. Alright, 
once you've got your uh, baking or your rices in there, then you're gonna add your sugar, your two teaspoons of sugar, put that straight into there. Again, you continue mixing that through. Once you've done that, then you're gonna add your salt, just like that. I prefer to add in one at a time. I find it, it comes out much better in terms of flavor. You could always add all those ingredients together and just mix it at uh, what in one one swoop moment. But I prefer to do it one by one. Then I know for a fact not only have I missed not missed anything, but it's mixed through quite nicely. All right. So once that's done, as you can see, nicely mixed, and also you can see it's nice and light. There's no clumps in there, just like that. You put that aside. And the next little bit we're going to be doing is mixing the egg. If there are any questions, you can obviously shoot through and then the, my lovely wife will obviously shout what they are and then I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. All right, so we're going to take one egg, crack that into there. Then we're going to take our butter and we're going to stick it into the microwave. You want to let this butter melt. You do not want it to be a solid butter as it will... Is when you're actually trying to um, mix this through later, if it is a solid butter, it will be, instead of having a nice smooth butteriness throughout the whole mixture, you're going to have little clumps of butter mixed throughout the whole thing. And obviously that's not what you want to do. Alright, so as you can see, you give that egg a nice little whisk. Again, you're not whisking it up to make it any firmy or frothy, you're just whisking it up. I whisk a little bit of extended amount of time just to make sure that it is nice and properly mixed and there's no white or yellow just lying around there. As you can see the butter, nicely melted. We're not going to use that just yet. Then in your egg mixture, you're going to add your three tablespoons of yogurt. Carolyn Franklin, is that wine I saw on the counter? We are running low. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes it Caro, is. it is. It yes, is it a is. lovely glass of Schwarzkopf from Herman exactly. Hermanus Petersfontein. There you go. It's a good wine. Uh, it's very tasty. I definitely recommend it. It is one of my favorites. There you go. All right, so inside here, you've got your mm. egg, you've got your yogurt. You give this a nice little mix, and you're just going to essentially incorporate everything together. Just like that. You don't want to go crazy whisking with it because if you do go crazy whisking with it, it's just going to start thickening up and you don't want that to happen. All right, so there we go. As you can see, just until the eggs incorporated into it nicely. The next little bit would be to add the, this mixture and the butter into the actual, sorry, into the actual uh, uh, bowl now. All right. All right, so what we're going to be doing is you're going to be taking this, you're going to be taking this, and you're going to be mixing it through. You're going to add that all into the bowl. Now, if you were doing this by hand, this is the point where you would actually need to start getting ready to get your hands into the bowl itself. But I'll tell you in a moment. And then obviously your butter, you add your butter, not straight onto your yogurt, around the yogurt like that. Reason being is your butter is really hot and there's also egg in there. And if you don't, if you add anything really hot to it right now, it's going to start cooking that egg. And instead of getting a beautiful naan, you'll get a scrambled egg naan. Right, the next little bit is pretty straightforward. You're gonna take uh, the mixture and put it into your mixer over here. Cheers to you. Mm -hmm. Delicious. All right, click that in, make sure it's nicely in. Then we'll put this down. Now, if you were doing this now, if you are doing this by hand, obviously you would mix everything you have by hand. You can take a wooden spoon, you're going to gently start mixing it all together until it all comes together quite nicely. And then you're going to start kneading it in the way I'm going to show you just now. But this again, I prefer to use the mixer. It's a lot quicker, it's more efficient. All right, so come take a look and we'll see what we're doing. So just like the last breads, we start on a low speed. Get that mixing nicely. Yeah. So now we're just going to keep mixing until everything's incorporated and then we're going to start adding our hot water. So I'm going to grab the water now while you're watching there. Again, if there's any questions, please feel free to give a shout and I'll answer to the best as I can. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So as you can see, it's starting to come quite nicely together. 
Uh, what we can see around the corners, around the sides, you can see it definitely is a little bit on the dry side. So at this point, we're going to slowly start adding our warm water. We're going to add a nice little splot in there and just allow everything to work nicely together. A splot. A splot. <laughs> yes. You can see how everything's coming nicely together now. You can see how it's all mixing through and starting to grab everything on its own. Now you don't want to add all your water in in one go. For the simple reason is, as you can see, it's still quite wet in there. If you had to add all the water in, you essentially would have to make more, take more flour and add it to the dough. And again, you don't want to be doing that. Why hot water and not cold water? Question from Mika. So hot water is very important in this because it basically helps with the yogurt. It helps essentially rise it with all the other uh, uh, rises or the leaveners. Um, if you use cold water, the whole thing is going to take a little bit longer than what it really should be because generally when people are making it on, if you are making it for the evening, you want this to be done within a half an hour to 45 minutes. If you do it with cold water, it's going to take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half to actually do the rising process. Sandra says, cheers Mikey. Cheers. Cheers to you. <laughs> mm. Oh, sorry. All right, so as, sorry. So as you can see, if you get straight down, as you can see in the corner, there's still a little bit of uh, flour still there and it's not quite mixing properly. So now we're going to put a little shot of water in there. Not a splot. Not a splot, a shot. <laughs> right? And at this point, we're going to start turning up the speed to really get that mix going. All right, you can see how everything's nicely pulled together nicely. Give this a nice good, give this a nice good mix. Mika says, thanks Jody, super helpful. Cool. And that pretty much goes, so now I'm just going to turn it down, slow it down a bit. So that little tip that I gave for, for you Mika, basically um, it goes with any type of bread. If a bread that requires a riser or a leavener, you want to do it warm water and not cold water. Right. Right, so come take a look. Now if you notice at the bottom, it's slightly sticking to the bottom there. What we're gonna be doing is just popping this drop. <laughs> we'll take a tablespoon of flour. And we're just gonna drop that in at the bottom. And basically what I'm doing here, if you were doing this by hand, that flour I just put in there would be the flour you would put onto the table and you would actually be working in that way. So now that it's nicely getting worked together nicely, you turn that speed up, really get it going, just until everything pulls off the ground, just like it has now. And now we can stop. All right, get that way. All right. Now we're going to pop this open and this dough feels fantastic. It is a little bit on the sticky side and that's where we're going to be working it a little bit more on the counter just so I can show you. So first thing is obviously always work in a clean space. Make sure that your table is nice and clean and there's nothing in your way. You do not want to be mixing anything on your table and have little bits of dirt or yogurt or any moisture on your table as it will just add into your dough and you definitely do not want that to happen. So my spoon went missing. There we go. Right, so again, I'm going to take a little bit of flour, just a tablespoon, a, ta a tablespoon like this. A little bit on the counter, just like that. Keep the spoon at hand because you will need a little bit later. And as you can see your dough, it's quite nice. It's not very sticky, as you can see. You can see the dough, it's very soft, as you can see, the finger just disappears. <laughs> and again, again, <laughs> again, you don't, you want the dough to be able to stick to your hand, like that, if you have a close look at my hand, stick to my hand, but not come off my hand. That's what you're looking for. All right. Liani says, I missed the start, how can I see it again? Liani, once we've finished the video, it will be uploaded onto the actual Stir Crazy page, and you can watch it there like a normal video. Yes. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be flattening this out a little bit and mixing it in the flour. So now this would be, if we had to start, we'd obviously mix it through with a spoon, everything comes together and then we would knead it like this. And the way you knead is you do a little roll and you squeeze. You roll and you squeeze. So the V formation. The V formation. 
So then you just continue like this and you can do this for as long as you want. Being the type of dough it is, you do not need to do this for very long. Anywhere from five to ten minutes. Okay. Is there a question? No, it's not a question, more just a comment. Yeah. Karen said it was her finger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little interesting seeing as you're all the way in London. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this dough is, is ready, so I'm not going to be kneading too much longer. So basically all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling it into a dome just to let it rise evenly. So what you're going to be doing is pulling this out like that. And notice all I'm doing is I'm pulling putting the, the, the dough on my palm of my fingers and pulling it out and making essentially stretching it out. As you can see like that and then I'm rolling everything into it like that. So you're tucking it in? I'm tucking it in, yes. As you can see, and that's all I'm doing. I'm tucking in, tucking in, tucking in until the very top of it forms absolutely crazy, beautiful, round ball of dough. All right. No. <laughs> all right. The next little spot is you need some oil. Obviously, I'm going to use some olive oil because it's obviously got a nice flavor, especially for the naan. Um, in a bowl, you're just going to put a little blob, as you can see, just a tiny little bit there. Probably like a tablespoon. And just like the other bread, you're going to take that, put that in there, spin it around to so make sure that oil nicely covers the whole bowl. Stop moving the bowl out of my shot. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> then you're going to take a damp cloth, like, this, like one like this, and you just fold it, and you put it over, and you put that into a warm spot. This needs to sit for at least 15 minutes, recommended about 30 minutes. Um, but like I say, you can make this really quickly otherwise. Um, this one has been sitting for about 45 minutes now. Um, so you can see the difference. There's not much difference in terms of how it's actually risen. What you're doing is you're not trying to make this rise. What you're allowing the dough to do is for the glutens and the actual proteins within it to actually bind and relax and therefore giving you a much softer texture. If you had to use the one we just made straight away, your naan is going to be a little bit more tough and a little bit hard. Again, you're going to be making something similar to a frisbee rock or rock frisbee, and you don't definitely, you definitely don't want to be doing that. Right. Question from Karen. Yes. Can you also flavor the bread, like adding coconut, etc., or any suggestions? Or are we just going to be doing like the cheese and mixing the cheese so, and the painting of garlic and stuff? Coconut. If you're talking about coconut, like. Uh, um, decandescent coconut like flakes and stuff you could if you really wanted to um, I wouldn't recommend coconut um, I would I am going to be showing you how to flavor it with other stuff as well um, but yeah so if you take a look I don't know if you saw just now the the quality of the actual dough itself and you can see how nice and smooth this is you can see it's got a beautiful texture to it uh, my hands I have obviously got oil that's why it's got a shine to it and as you can see, as you can all feel, it's absolutely great. And again, if you push it into it, you want that slight springiness to push your finger back up there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Do it again. Okay, again. Perfect. Slight little spring. All right. So that is pretty much your non-dough ready to go. So the next thing you want to do is you want to get your wok ready because you don't want to be rolling these out unless this is ready. Because if this is still trying to get hot and whatnot, and it's just sitting here, the doughs are going to shrink slightly, and they're probably going to dry out a little bit. And you want them to be as fresh and nice as possible. So what we're going to be doing to get our wok ready, I'm just going to move everything out of the way. And then I'm going to get my biggest stove going, and that would be here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to heat this up first. You'll be putting the bottom down first, straight onto it, and you're going to let this get as hot as you essentially can get it. So while we're busy rolling, this will be on, getting super hot, so ready to go. Right. Okay, so now we come back to our dough here. So now we're going to essentially roll this into a loaf, kind of like how we did the color. And then we are going to cut it into small little pieces. You can decide on the size of these pieces, and obviously the bigger it is, the bigger your naan is going to be. These are generally quite nice, They've, they are quite nice per person. Um, but you can make anywhere from 4 to 20 if you really wanted to. And the best thing about these naans is once you've made them, you can freeze them quite happily and use them whenever you'd like to. You do not need to use them fresh, but I definitely recommend it. Alright, so those you just put on the side. Make sure you've got some flour here. As you can see, not a lot of flour. 
hot like a pancake pan. So yes. must the wok be as hot as a pancake yes. pan? Yes, yes it must be. Yes, Liani, it must be as hot as a pancake pan. All right, so the first one I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show you a quick just how to do the roll. Then I'm going to show you how to add any other flavors to the dish or to the naan. Okay, so first thing, as you can see, it's a nice little roll. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to flatten it down. Gives a nice little flat and then you're going to give that classic shape to it by slightly pulling it out like that. Now you can already see the, the shape of the naan forming over there. The next little bit is using a rolling pin. Definitely get some flour into it because the naan will stick to this. And then you kind of focus on going only up and down like that. As you can see that naan stretches out very nicely, very easily with no real problem there. In terms of thickness, again, that would be your choice. Some people like a thick naan, some people like a thin naan. This one, we are going to be going for about a medium naan. So right in the middle, and as you can see the, the naan itself, you can see the shape of the naan is sitting over there. Stop moving. Sorry. The bottom doesn't really matter how it looks, and you can see the thickness of this thing. If I put my finger there, it's probably about a, almost a like quarter size of my finger. It's a little bit, about half a centimeter thick. Yeah, maybe a bit yeah. thicker. So I'm just going to stress it out because I've been moving it around again. All right, so that is a plain naan. All right. So the next little bit is if you would want to make, if you would want to make this a flavored naan, I'm going to show you how to make a cheese and herb naan. Um, it's pretty straightforward. What you do is before you make this, what you do is you will take your dough. Let me switch that off, it's getting warm next to me. What you do is you take your naan, you'd roughly spread it out like that. See, very rough. You take your cheese, grated cheese, and it can be any type of cheese. The stronger the cheese, the better, or the sharper, should I say, because it obviously gives that awesome flavor that comes with it. The next little bit is I'm going to take a little bit of this oregano, really, really tasty. And then just sprinkle a little bit across the whole thing. Again, it doesn't have to be oregano, it can be anything you would like. You could also put any spice into it if you would like. Then you're gonna take all the cheese, kind of get it all into the middle, and then you're gonna start rolling the whole thing. So you, you enclose all the cheese and all that herb into that, and then you're gonna just work it just slightly just to get that cheese really mixed into the dough itself. As you can see, just mix it all in there. Make sure there's no like big cavity of cheese because of the way we're going to be rolling it. Alright, now that we've, we've mixed it, you can see the dough itself. You can see it's very nice, thick, or well, not thick, but like chunky and cheesy in there. Again, we're going to flatten it out again. Gently pull it out a little bit. Just bear in mind that if you add things like cheese or stuff like that, it does make the, the, the dough a little bit more breakable, softer. So as you can see, push that out. Pull it out that way. You can see the actual shape coming together quite nicely. Okay. Which cheese is he using? It's a white mature cheddar, Sandra. That's it. And uh, you can definitely use any cheese. I have made naans with palms and cheese before. Really Ooh, tasty. Oh, those were delicious. Yes, very tasty. Um, but yes, I'm using a white cheddar because of the creaminess that it brings. As you can see, the difference between the two. Gouda would be a bit too oily or would it be alright? It uh, would be a bit on the oilier side, so I definitely recommend a little bit less on the on the gouda. The next little bit is I'm going to make a garlic butter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a garlic quickly. A little quick way if anyone doesn't know, the best way to peel a garlic without making yourself or everyone else smell like garlic is as you can see, un unpeeled, you take your, your knife, you put your knife on top, you just give it a like crush. Note I haven't crushed it completely. I've just essentially loosened the skin where the skin just falls off. Ah. Yes. All right, so once that's done, you're gonna take the front of your knife, you're gonna push that down until it is nice and squashed, and then really roughly give that a slice and dice. And chop it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be super fine, super thin, but that is what we just like that. And then this, all we're going to be doing to make the garlic butter is taking a little bit of butter which I will melt some while we're busy cooking the naans and we will add that to the butter and it will essentially make a garlic butter which we will brush on top of the naans once they are done. All right. With a plain naan you just brush it. Which I'll show you once we start cooking it. Alright, so that's how you make, that's how you make a flavoured naan. 
and that's how you make a butter uh, or plain naan. Obviously, like I say, you wok. I can feel the heat. Like if I put my hand here, it feels. Hmm, what do I compare it to? If you if you guys know what brise off you like, if you put your hand here, it would be hot Ooh. enough to start cooking. Essentially, that's where you want it to be. So now here is the secret to making a naan on a wok. First, you want absorbent towel. Okay, you take one. You fold it. Take a no towel fold it. This is quite important because. If it's too thin, you will burn your fingers, and you do not want to be doing that. So you fold it in quarters almost? You fold it into a quarter, and then you fold it around your two fingers, like that. You can see it's got a lot of folds in there, because, again, you're going to be putting an oil onto this, and then you're going to be ripening a hot pan with it, so you don't want the heat to go through too quickly. Now the secret to actually making the knot is, if you take your, your wok, pick it up, you turn it around. That is your secret right there. Put that upside down, note the flame is still on. The flame is still heating up the whole bottom of it like that. Just like that. The first thing you do is you're going to take that folded paper, oil, it can be any oil. Again, I'm using olive oil. You give it a nice little few squirts there, no, just not too much over there. And then you just take this and you gently wipe the back of it. Note it smokes, it will smoke a lot. It's got a very bad habit of doing that. Should you you know, with the lockdown and the loads and stuff, it's very difficult for the wok to smoke nowadays. So. No, that has been looked at. I think. Oh, it has been looked at. Yes, oh, I don't know. Great. I think. So the Carolyn next... says you've ruined it. No garlic ever. You don't have to. <laughs> right. So as you can see, the plain naan, nicely uh, smoking over there. You literally take this, put that straight onto there. Now you just gently touch the sides. Obviously, be very careful with this. This is very hot. You do not want to burn yourself. I don't want to hear, I don't want to see pictures of people with big blisters on their finger. I want to see blisters on that, and that is what you're looking for. All right, so if you come on and take a closer look, and you'll start seeing the little bubbles starting to appear on the side there. I don't know if you can see them or not. Not really, well, I suppose there. Yeah, you can start seeing over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like rising a bit. It, it takes a little, it takes about a, a minute or two to actually really get there. I mean, I can see the, the little bumps happening over here. So while you pursue it then, I will get some more butter. Right. Ooh, it's like puffing up. There you go. Whoops, wrong way. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to be gently lifting it up on the side and having a look underneath. You can see there. Mm. Now we lift the whole thing. Look at that. Absolutely oh, beautiful. Yeah. Now you take the uncooked size. And you place it down, gently pushing down, do not flatten it down, otherwise you've got to stick to the actual wok itself. Just allow that to cook nicely. I'm, I'm busy melting some butter down so we can show you the brushing later. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in there. Now I'm going to put the butter in there. Now I'm going As you can see, it's cooking really nicely. You can see underneath there how it's going. It's obviously not ready. You want more color on there. Linda Jack, can yes. you use a frying pan if you don't have a wok? Definitely you can use a frying pan. Just be careful with the frying pan because although this is hot, the frying pan is actually going to have a lot more direct heat on this, where this is there's a space between the flame and the, the actual pot pan itself. Um, you can use a pan, just be very careful. Actually put your temperature a lot lower than you normally would. Alright. Can you do it with a shallower pan? Yes, you can, definitely. Hey, basically, any type of pan that, uh, that you have or whatnot, as long as you can get your whole naan into it. So note that I've taken it off. All I'm going to be doing, because it's getting quite dark on the side, turning it around and just letting it to cook a little bit more. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this beautiful naan straight onto your board. So I've obviously, while you guys were watching, I did some of the, the garlic butter. You take a brush, just like that. You brush it over it like that. Now this is obviously a garlic, but you do not have to put the garlic in there. 
if you wanted to if you wanted to do like a herb butter instead of the garlic you just add your herbs to there or you could just leave it plain as it is all right so you can do both sides or the one side this is obviously the one there you can always turn it around and do the other side as well mm -hmm. if anything guys this smells amazing all right there we go beautiful naan ready to go so now Give me a second. Oh, we're gonna do this one now. Yes. So now again, we're gonna be taking our cloth, spotting a little bit of olive oil, just to make it nice and to fry it nicely. You can wipe this down with water as well if you would like. Um, yes. Right. So now we're gonna take our cheesy herb naan. Do the exact same thing. Straight on. Now the thing is with the cheese, because if you take a close look, you'll notice that there's actual pieces of cheese in there. You need to watch this, especially the heat, because the cheese will probably burn before the bread is baked. So this should go a little bit quicker, as well as you generally should roll this a little bit thinner to start with. Garlic is good for you, Carol. <laughs> yes, it is. Very healthy for you. Definitely gets the, the keeps, juices working in the body. Keeps the vampires at bay. Keeps the vampires <laughs> at bay, definitely. So let me just show you. We're going to lift this up. You can note how it's also sticking because of the cheese. Ah, that's hot. And it's cooking a lot faster. Yes. So we just lift it up nicely. Oh, I can tell you one thing, this smells amazing. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put a little bit more oil on here because I do not want this to stick. Just a splash of oil. Again, be very careful with this because it is very hot. You take that and you put that down. I mean, how awesome does that look? Oh. I mean, my word. What about Teflon on the inside of a pan? Oh yes, that would definitely work. Basically, any type of non-stick would work. If you do not want to put oil on this, you could put spray and cook. But, but yeah, Teflon would definitely work. Alright, so you gently tap it, make sure all the sides are down. Because you do not want to be serving any type of raw uh, lard with any type of curry. Sandra says, if you guys are delivering, I'll have three with cheese and garlic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when lockdown is done, you are more than welcome to come over and we can do a cooking class at home. There we go, Mikey. All right. So now we're going to lift this up just like we did just now. Make sure there's nothing sticking. Just like that. You see a little bit stuck there because of that. So we want to cook a little bit more because that piece there is actually sitting over here. I mean, look how beautiful that is. Look at that. Yummy. There we go. All right. Oh my gosh, that tastes amazing. Yes, it does. Now because there is the cheese and the herbs in there, you do not need to put garlic butter on there. You just need to take a plain butter or no butter at all and splash it across. You could also take olive oil and splash it over the whole thing as well. Yes, Liani, it does look amazing. It is delicious. Alright, so this yum. is just about just about done. Alright, so then we're gonna take this off. So imagine this was just plain butter. Just take the butter itself brush across the whole thing and just note how the butter just makes all the dark little patches stand out that much more and just looks so much more complete all right and there you go so you have a cheese and herb naan right there so now we're going to put this over here Let's put that over there all right so now i'm going to bring it all over to you guys and what we got here is Brett's butter chicken curry as you can see with a cheese and herb naan with a plain naan definitely some basil goes really nice with everything in terms of the herbs that go in here you can use fresh herbs it doesn't really matter but as you can see inside here beautiful naan absolutely tasty really delicious all right and that is how you make naan nice quick and simple recipe it has taken a half an hour um, but you can definitely do this in a lot shorter amount of time um, ultimately, um, 
I'm going to give the wife a taste and then she can tell you how it tastes. So little spots over there. And then there you go. Mm. Fantastic. How is that? Oh my word. <laughs> Absolutely great. So thank you again. Um, tomorrow uh, mm. we've got a nice little special dish happening from Brett's side of things. And then yes, I'll see you guys again on Thursday when we're making uh, awesome roaster cook, ro um, roaster cook um, pizza, pizza bread. Fry bread. That's mm. going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really tasty. And remember, anyone can cook. Thank you.